What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for a new season of Love and Marriage Huntsville season 3 episode 1. Episode was titled Sisters in Brawl. God. <clears throat> Kimmy and Tisha. <laughs> All right you guys. So, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching the video and if you're not watching this video or any other other ones on the channel and not already subscribed to the channel what are we doing you guys hit that subscribe button thank you guys to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel we just a few minutes ago when i looked 996 subscribers so we need four more and we're at a thousand so with that being said subscribe stop taking me out on a date and you know not having me pay for the date at the end of it so without further ado um let's get into the love and marriage on skills shall we All right, guys, let's talk about Mel and Martell, right? So we see Mel, Mel, she's at home, and Destiny goes over there to visit her, right? So she and, and Destiny, they're catching up with each other. You know, Mel is talking about now that the divorce is finalized. You know, she is getting to know herself. So she feels like she's going to be celibate for seven years, which I don't blame Mel, especially with all the shit that she went through with Martell. Don't blame Mel at all, right? So like I said, she's learning herself. So then Destiny tells her that, you know, she went to brunch with, you know, Kimmy and, you know, Mel's like, see, I told you, you and Kimmy had a lot in common. She's like, yeah, when we did have the, you know, another brunch, she was asking a lot of personal questions about me and LeBuick. And that's when Destiny dropped the bomb on all of us that she and LeBuick are divorced. And Mel's like, why didn't you tell me? And Mel, and she was like, you know, Mel, you've been going through a lot and I just didn't want to involve you in that. She was like, you should have definitely told me that. So then she asked her, like, how long ago was this? She, she said about a month ago. And that was a running thing. If you guys go back and look at uh, any of my reviews last season, my every question, every video, I always ask the question of where was LeBuick? Like, that was a running thing for me last season. Where was LeBuick at? So, um, then we see Martell. You guys know I can't stand Martell Holt. So Martell's goofy ass goes down to Destiny's store, right? So they catch up as well. So he asks her, how was the baby? She says, oh, he's good. You know, he's hitting all his milestones. He was like, how old is he now? She says he's nine months old. So then she mentions, you know, to Martell about this Instagram post. He's like, you know, the one with me and the baby going to school. She was like, yes. And at the bottom of it, I guess he mentioned the baby that he's had, he's had with Arian. And she felt that that was disrespectful, but I'm like, I don't think it was disrespectful because I mean, we all knew that he was having another baby with the woman. So I don't really know what she expected for him to do. I mean, like I said, we all knew he was having a baby with Arian. It wasn't a secret. And it's a good thing that he's, you know, he's claiming his kids. So I don't see anything wrong with that. He and Mel are divorced. So I really did not see where Destiny was coming from in that instance. Now, if it was something like, you know, he was keeping it a secret. He had kept it a secret for so long and then just revealed it on social media. But then too, like when Mel and Martell, I don't even know if they follow each other. I don't even know if she's had has him blocked. Cause the thing is I actually follow I follow Mel on, on Instagram and I actually follow Martell on Instagram. Don't ask me why. So she feels some type of way about it. Like I I honestly didn't understand. I didn't get it, but whatever. So then Martell tells her he's looking to partner with someone. He has these these body butters, this shampoo and all this kind of stuff. And she was questioning him, like, you know, who's who is who 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 made it? Do you have a contract with this? He says, Oh no, I don't have a contract. She was like, You don't have a contract. Like, I don't want to put that in my store. Which I understood, I understood exactly where she was coming from with that. So he she says, so why haven't you signed on to it? He says, because he was talking about twenty percent, but he doesn't have that twenty percent at this point. So she was like, why didn't you sign on? He says, you know, I just, I waited until after the divorce was finalized. And she's like, well, how long have you been divorced? A few months now. Then why haven't you signed on? Martel is an irritant. He irritates my spirit. He irritates my soul. He irritates my ass. He just irritates everything about me. God, Martel Holder irritates me. God. So then he asked her about her and LeBuick, right? How are they? She says, well, you know, it's in God's hands, right? And then he wants to say, well, you know, it's up to us to put it in the work. And I was like, did you put it in the work for 12 years? 
he gonna sit there and say, well, you know, I put in the work with me and Mel. Did you? Because for half of your, I mean, for a good chunk of your marriage, you had Mel over here. You had that dumb dingbat, Arian, over here. I still don't understand Arian. That is the dumbest woman. I don't get her. She's an idiot. Arian is an idiot. I, I, he literally called you on television a damn peasant. And you went and had a baby with this fool. Okay. Martell is not going to get my dander up. He is not going to get my pressure and my dander up this season. I will not allow Martell to do it to me this season. Because he did it to me all last season. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to let Martell... I'm going to stay calm in these reviews when it comes to talking about Martell Holt. <sighs> we going to center myself. <sighs> nope, because Martell, he, he worked my nerves in this scene. So, the way that Destiny was talking to him, I guess Martell doesn't like it because he wants for a woman to stay in a woman's place and a man to be in a man's place. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You sound just like Marceau. So you want a woman to be barefoot and pregnant in the house, in the kitchen, cooking and cleaning, and you do your lumberjack type shit, right, I guess. What it is, is Martell can't handle women who challenge him. Because you got that dumb dingbat, Arian, who just lays on her back and takes it. That's all. Like, you got that dumb dingbat, Arian laying on her back taking it. That's what that shit is. Shout out to Mel though. Mel is over at um, you know, the old Holt and Holt office, right? That's now her office. And she's talking to some people on um on on um FaceTime about she's wanting to work with some of the HBCUs in the area. She wants to bring on some interns, which I'm like, okay, go on, Mel. Boss up. So then she gets a good visit from Chris, right? And here we go talking about the goddamn 47 acres. Child, if I hear about that 47 acres up again in my life, I'm going to scream about that too. The 47 acres. We have been talking about the 47 acres in season one. First, it was a comeback crew. Then Martell and Mel was going to do it. Whoever's going to do it, whoever's going to deal with that 47 acres, deal with it and don't put it on the show, right? So, you know, um... Where was I yet? So Chris is talking to her because he wants to talk. He wants to, um, he said he's trying to close on it and that the investors that, you know, are looking into it, they want to build some houses in the, in the, on the 47 acres. There'll be about $200,000. And he asked her, does she, would she be interested in building on them? And she says, you know, have you told Mart Martell yet at this? Have you told Martell at this point? Because, you know, with Martell, I don't want no issues with Martell. I don't want him to feel, getting his feelings, you know, none of that. So that's, you know, that's where Mel is. She, and Chris says, you know, I'm going to speak to him. I'm not going to blindside him or anything like that. I'm like, cool. I, the 47 acres, can we be done with it? But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so we got a new intro for Love and Marriage Huntsville. They added, <laughs> it's funny. So you got Kimmy and Maurice. You, we've added Destiny as a full-time cast member. You got Tisha and, and Marceau together. And then you have Martel by himself, and so is um, Mel. So the episode, we open up and we see um, Marceau. So Marceau is over at Scott Manor. Now, at this point, Scott Manor is still what it was last season neverland shout out to nini for that one it's neverland it's it's the, still the sticks the bud but marceau lets us know that the reason that it's it's what it is now is because you know it's been raining so they haven't been able to put down any foundation they haven't been able to put down any wiring or anything just because of the rain which makes sense so he's talking to his uncle right and then maurice shows up and then another thing that's stalling them with um this whole thing is the fact that you know, Tisha keeps wanting to add more and more stuff to it, so it just pushes them back. So then, you know, Maurice, not Maurice, but Marceau is like, you know, you here, like, what's going on? And then, you know, Maurice is like, you know, just want to see what's going on. He's like, it's not like, you know, Kimmy is going to let you move up. He's like, let me, well, allow you to move up here. We all know the situation last season that Kimmy did not want to build a house next to them. And especially if Wanda was going to be there. So I got Kimmy last season and I still get Kimmy. So then they talk about the fact, they talk, you know, Marceau says that, you know, K 
Kimmy and, uh, not Kimmy, but Tisha and Martell are very much alike in the fact that they don't know how to let things go, which is 100% true. I think that's why they butt heads so much because they are the same person. So then Maurice brings up the fact that, you know, um, Martell had did the strawberry letter, which I actually heard that. I think it was my cousin. I think my cousin texted me that, that, that um, interview with him on a strawberry letter. I listened to as much as I could and I clicked off. Because I feel like when Martell, Martell was just, you know, just giving lip service, apologizing to me. I think he was just giving lip service because I just don't believe anything that comes out of Martell Holt's mouth, right? So then later in the episode, we see Marceau. So Marceau is at his office and his daughter calls him. Um, oh, damn, Ash just, hold on. So yeah, Marceau's daughter called him, right? And she wants to, him to bring her some chips, right? Now, she didn't know what brand of chips she wanted. So she says, well, let me research it. He says, yeah, use all your resources. So then Kimmy comes in, right? And Kimmy's coming in because she has some meal preps for him. So I guess she's been doing meal preps for him since Tisha's been in school. Okay. So then we find out that he tells her that Tisha's graduating, right? He wants to throw a surprise party for Tisha. And she's like, so do you want me to plan it? If so, the answer is no. And then he wants to, he tells Tisha, I mean, Kimmy, that she needs to extend an olive branch to Tisha. And I'm like, for what? Like, this whole situation between Kimmy and Tisha is because of Tisha and her not putting Wanda's ass in her place. That's what the issue is. You didn't put, you've never put Wanda in her place, right? Um, Like, that's really what it is. And, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm not giving, extending an olive branch. I'm like, you shouldn't. <laughs> So then Kimmy tells him, like, you know what? How could you call Wanda to plan this part? He says, Wanda's going to be out of town. She's like, so when are you going to plan it? He says, a weekend that she's out of town. So then Kimmy says, you know what, Mar Marceau? I'll help you. I'm willing to help you, but I'm not cooking. You know, I'm not doing all the cooking, but I'm willing to help you. She's better than me because I want to help him, period. The hell? Not for, for Tisha? Let's move on. All right, you guys. So we got um, Tisha. So she's with her cousin, and her name is um, Kiki, right? So Keisha's like, you know, Tisha is getting ready to graduate, right? And um, she's talking about, you know, I think that Marceau is trying to throw me a surprise party, but he don't know that I know. Oh, God, I hate her voice. <laughs> so K Kiki, I was looking at Kiki. I'm like, Kiki, you look just like Wanda and you just as messy as Wanda is. We don't need a lot of her family members on this show. Let's just put it out there like that. So she asked her, do you think your in-laws are going to come? She's like, you know, I really don't know if they're going to come. And then she asked more specifically if Kimmy's going to come. And she says, you know, I don't know. But, you know, me and Kimmy have to be around each other because Maurice and Marceau, they best friends. They're brothers. And you guys are sister-in-laws. We're going to talk about that, too. And then she says, you know, I don't really talk to her about Scott Manor because she over it. She is over it. I would be too. I would not want to live by Kent and by Tisha, or I really would not want to live by Tisha, especially if Wanda comes around. Absolutely not. I could not be in the presence of Wanda for more than five seconds. So then Tisha says that, you know, I want to be in a good space with everyone because, you know, I'm growing and God is blessing me. Okay, Tisha, girl, whatever. I really want to know what her degree is in event planning. So then we see, um, you know, like I said, she's got her to her second master's. So we see everyone showing up to the party. Mel is showing up. You know, Mel says that, you know, she and Tisha at this point, they're in a good space for how long we shall see. Because Carlos King, talk, you know, talk, he tweeted talking about, you know, he likes to see um, Mel and Tisha in a good space. But for how long, how long is this going to last? Right. So then um, Tisha's brother is there as well as that messy ass cousin Kiki. So he, the brother asked Kimmy. Is, you know, she and Tisha good? She says, you know, is Tisha the one with the space, with the issue, the spacing issues? And I'm like, and, you know, she says she sent, they say he, they, he says that she's sensitive. We all know that Tisha is sensitive. But the thing with Tisha is Tisha allowed Wanda to get in her ear. So then Kimmy says, you know, we just, we just, um, we just had a bit of a difference of opinion, right? So then Wanda 2.0 chimes in saying that, you know, Kimmy could have stood up more for um, Tisha. And she was like, when? She's like, at the reunion. I'm like, girl, I know we're not talking about the season one reunion all over again. So the season one reunion, you guys remember at the season one reunion, they asked, I think it was Egypt that hosted the season one reunion. So you guys remember Egypt asked the question of 
were Kimmy and Tisha talking about Mel, which they were. It was on camera, lady. And, and Kimmy was like, you know, I told the truth. What do you want me to do? She, you could have had her back more. It was on camera, bitch. I'm sorry. Lady, it was on camera. I didn't mean to call her a bitch. Lady, it was on camera. It was on fucking camera. What did you... Tisha lied. Like all... And we know how Carlos King is. Carlos was going to play the foot... The, play the play it back and be like, Oh, shit. We were talking about it. My bad, Mel. We just lied. The fuck? So then... Kimmy challenged her. Do you think we were talking about her? She was like, Yeah, but you know what? I'm a back out of this with Nasus. You stepped your big ass feet in it, stand in it. You defended your cousin, but you knew she was wrong. Like the f God, that was that was the dumbest. Like really stupid to say, have her back, but then you agreed that she they were talking about Mill. So you just didn't have your own cousins back, if we are being honest, right? Cool, got it. So then Tisha finally shows up, and you know she thanks everyone, including for showing up, and she thanks Marceau. Don't care. So then the family, there was a cousin, there was an uncle or a cousin or somebody there. Marceau asked him how was he related to them. He told him, I, I, I watched your, I, I used to watch your wife when we lived on the other side of the tracks. You guys remember that comment he made at the end of last season, well, not the end, of, the end of the first half of last season, that, you know, they came from two sides of the track. They came from two sides of the track, right? He tried to explain it away. I don't care. So then Kimmy, you know, she pulled Tisha to the side, right? And she talks about the fact that the click just just came at her and about what happened. So Tisha says that she felt like, you know, I felt like you was not there for me. You know, I don't have a sister. Oh, my God, Tisha. Tisha is delusional as hell. Like, how many ways? Let me, let me explain that shit one more time to you. She feels that Timmy did not have her back, right? So you wanted Kimmy to sit there and lie at their reunion and say that y'all weren't talking about Mel. But like I just said, it was on camera. Once again, it was on camera that you guys were talking about Mel. What did you want to say? Like, and then if the producer said, hey, roll that beautiful bean footage and show her. These people are delusional and dumb as hell. Like, I just don't get it. It's, it's it's the dumbest shit I've ever saw in my life. Is that my nose? I believe it is, you guys. I think that's it. If that's it. um, Great opening episode. Great opening episode of the season. I, I'm looking forward to seeing this, how this season goes. I know we... I, I saw Kyra from Ready to Love in the, in the promo, in the trailer. I'm ready, to see, I'm ready to see what this is about Marceau and this alleged baby that he had. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be a good season. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button. And um, be safe, you guys. Stay blessed. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys do this do. Like I said, be blessed. And I'll catch you guys later for Power Book 3. We would be doing The Shy married to medicine and we're housewives of potomac all right so that's it you guys i'll see you guys later